Um, when, you're, when you're doing this kind of work and trying to bring these two things together, um, there are, you know, the, the window side is getting increasingly more complex. And it can be kind of fiddly to get things talking and working and happy. So, um, if, if we look back to maybe five, six years ago, um, our options and, and capabilities were dramatically lower than they, than they are today, dramatically lower. Um, we've seen some really good software uh, come on the scene for Amiga OS um, to make it more compatible with, uh, with Windows uh, and those systems. Okay, uh, presentation, main camera, that's me, fade. I can also change the broadcast from my tablet. So I, all sorts of cool tech. Um, so I'm going to log into this. And this monitor looks like garbage with the, uh, oh, it's just the connector. It's fixed now. Wonderful. Okay, so here I've got my, my this is the, the Windows side. Um, if you ever get confused between whether you're looking at a Windows machine or an Amiga machine, just, just ask, and I'll let you know. It's, I, I, it's pretty uh, contrasty uh, between the two. Let's see if I can reach that from here. Um, this is my Amiga OS 4. Um, just a quick kind of tutorial. Um, I generally like the drive icons in the upper left. And then along the top bar, I've got my status dockies. So this is a package that's available on the AMI store um, that you can download that has the network docky with the address and throughput. We'll look at that a little bit later. CPU utilization, memory utilization. This is the X5000 uh, temperature docky. This is the Zeta FTP server. We'll show that, I think. Maybe. Um, this is a tool that I've written in Hollywood that I've not released yet. Um, and so I, I keep meaning to do that. I'm going to skip over it. And then this is the TuneNet mini dock, which is pretty cool. Some hot links over here for popular applications. And then my main toolbar at the bottom. I normally run my screen at uh, 2004 for whatever by whatever the, the horizontal is, right? So it's much higher resolution. Um, it, it's great. This is also a 16-bit screen because our VNC client has to do a lot more data conversion with 32-bit. And really, I'm not doing a lot of high graphics on the workbench screen. And if I need to, I'll fire something off on a different screen with 32 or 24-bit. Uh, um, let me uh, just get onto Discord here. I'm not on the YouTube, unfortunately. Maybe one of my Discordian friends can port stuff between YouTube and Discord so I can see it. Um, this, are, this window you're seeing here, this is an unreleased beta version of uh, a VNC client being worked on by Renee Olson. Uh, Paul, server, server, thank you, Paul. Driven by Paul in his incessant bickering at Renee to do this, what makes this particular client nice and special is Renee spent a significant amount of time in the graphics library with Stephen Sully a couple years ago. So he kind of has a handle on how that works. I'll say kind of, because I don't know if anybody does. Um, well, maybe one person these days. But, um, uh, it, but it's written Amiga OS 4 ground up. There's no planar support. It's 100% uh, native OS. Uh, Renee gave us a little a GUI. I'm not going to focus on this too much, but we will talk to it in a minute. So that's the, the high level. Um, I also have here um, something to show some eye candy. This is running a touch screen, so we'll start with that. Uh, this is running a touch screen monitor. And if I hit the test button here and take a sip. So that's touch screen, right? Touch screen. He actually has implemented full multi-touch on an Amiga. There's no SDK yet. Um, he's been very responsive. I got this running for the VCF and hooked it up to Sam and people are playing games. Um, I thought I would show it here just as some candy. These are not expensive. You can go on to uh, Amazon, whatever store you buy your stuff from, and pick up that kind of uh, system pretty cheap. Um, it's lower res. It's only a, a 1080. 
So I run my regular one with a different monitor, but you guys get the idea. Um, I'll also say that I've got some beta software, beta testing stuff going on here. I'm going to try to avoid that. Um, hopefully it doesn't uh, get me in any trouble. Let's see, getting my notes up here. Oh. Is it? Okay. Thanks, Jamie. Someone told me I left the sponsor overlay up. The remote control doesn't let me control the downstream keyer. It's not built into the WebSocket API that I'm using. Thank you, Jamie. This is why you guys help out. Okay, it's gone now. Um, so I, I think we'll go ahead and, and we'll start with the, the VNC side of the house. So VNC is a, a protocol for remote screen share. It's been greatly improved, oh, uh, and when I say that, and, and, and it, it's been, um, the way VNC works is it actually takes the screen, chops it up into tiles, and then sends the tile. And that was fantastic like 25 years ago when this was invented. The more modern clients will leverage the uh, H.264, 265 encoding engines in the graphics card and will actually just grab the screen at 30 frames a second and apply a, aggress uh, a, um, a an, an encoding that is uh, more sharp. I don't know the right term there, but we'll try to produce a much sharper image. And so now you're actually just watching a video that you can interact with. We don't have that support for the Amiga. What we have is the ability to connect in and see it, but it's still going to be that kind of tiled interface, and, and you can see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm running the VNC server. This is unreleased. There is one available on OS4 Depot. Um, it's got issues. It does work, but it has issues. Um, we're hoping that Renee can release this sometime in the future. Um, we'll continue to prod him and send him beer money uh, to get it done. Um, it's got this lovely little GUI at the bottom where it shows the logs, it shows the connection, it's got security built in for at least uh, subnet uh, connection. So I'm going to switch over to the PC. So this is software running on the Amiga. Oh, it didn't do what it was supposed to do. Thank you. Um, this is software running on the Amiga. And I'm going to use this client called Mobi, Moba Xterm. This is, um, there's a free version available. There's a pay version available. It is a massive networking Swiss Army knife for Windows. It's got terminal support. It's got Signix built into it. It's got a network scanner built into it. It does like a million things. Um, is it the world's greatest client for, or, or tool for these things? Probably not. But it's just super handy. There's a free version. The limits they put on it don't bother me. So this is, this is my go-to. VNC is a protocol. I can VNC from my tablet to my Amiga when I'm traveling. And when you're at a hotel, be sure to collect, connect the high-speed option or it's really slow. Because um, it does use a lot of network bandwidth. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to right-click on this. I'm going to do Edit Session. It's preset up. So I have the IP address. It's very basic stuff. So this is the internet address of your Amiga. Um, there's a couple different options you can do in the tool, and, and we're going to kind of bypass that for this conversation, just keep it simple and fast. So if I double click this, I should see the workbench screen. So I can be anywhere, and now I can access my Amiga. And uh, I am using the new client. There are issues with protocol versions and colors, and, uh, sorry, new server. There's issues with colors and protocols. It doesn't work everywhere. But, um, and this is beta, so it will break. The performance is actually pretty good in terms of moving windows around. If you look closely at it, you'll see those square lines being drawn. That's the tiling effect I was talking before. That's how it works. It, it literally chops up the, um, the screen into these blocks and calculates what's changed and then transmits the blocks uh, across the wire. So this is, this is very cool technology because you can do things like um, launch applications. And to give you an idea of the performance, and I hope Renee is cool with me showing this. I didn't 
exactly ask permission, per se. I kind of mentioned I might do it. Um, so this is Shader Joy. So if I press this button, Shader Joy is an OpenGL tool, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, that allows you to look at OpenGL shaders. Uh, it's actually a fantastic piece of code, and it's somewhat, it's like as advanced as my understanding as anything else out there. Um, but you can see this is what the Amiga sees. And if I click the button again, this is what the PC sees. So are you going to use this to play a video? No. Are you going to use it to play a platform game? No. But if you're using an art program, or you need to get to a web browser, or you need to read a file, or update the Emmy, uh, the Emmy West website, it works totally fine. Sorry, I've got a loose wire here somewhere. Um, works totally fine. It's great. Although I wonder if the touch screen still works on the Amiga side. It probably does somewhere. Anyway, this is the this is the VNC technology. So I kind of wanted to start here. It's quite simple, um, but it, it works really really nicely, uh, and it's a great way of getting access to your Amiga remotely. Uh, I'll pause there and ask if there are any. Uh, questions from the uh, audience here? No, okay. So I'm going to shut this down and, and let's go to the next tool. So that's if you're away from your Amiga, if you're sitting on your balcony with your whiskey and your Amiga's in the other room and you want to go online like Paul does every single night, then you do that. Um, whoops, there it goes. So the next tool that I wanted to show is a tool called Synergy. Who here has heard of Synergy as a tool? OK. Um, Synergy was designed, again, a long time ago. It's got a long, complicated history that I don't really know about. Um, what it allows you to do is to take the keyboard and mouse from one computer and to share it with other computers. And there's a limit, but it's a lot. Um, this is one area where I'm jealous of our MorphOS friends because the MorphOS folks have a built-in Synergy server. So you can use your MorphOS in the middle, keyboard, mouse, and control your, your options around you. On the Amiga, we have a couple of Synergy clients. There's one on OS4 Depot, A Synergy, written by our good friend uh, Doug, who used to attend AMI West. Uh, hopefully he comes back someday. Um, and then we have something uh, from a, a package called UHC Tools. And if, you've, if you're not familiar with UHC Tools, I highly recommend getting familiar with it because it is a very, very, very powerful pa package that supports all sorts of cool Swiss Army knifey things. So we'll, we'll show some of that here in a minute. OK, so the way Synergy works is I have my PC, and I have the Synergy client. And this guy rebooted, so it's not running. So Synergy. No, this one's not a touch screen. So I have my Synergy client. Oh, sorry, server. So I run Synergy, and it pops up over here. And the first thing, and this is, uh, uh, I should say, this is version one. There is a new version, version 3. They're charging for it. This commercial software for Synergy. There are other implementations available. This is one from a company called Seamless, Synergy One Pro. It, the new version has a lot of features we do not have. TLS encryption, uh, uh, discovery protocol, a whole bunch of stuff. We don't have any of that. So I let, if you use Synergy One Pro, um, then, you, then it'll work. Um, the way this is, is you choose, am I using someone else's computer to control me, or am I the controller? In this case, we're the controller. It tells us the IP address is up here, which is great, although I don't know the 172. I'm not sure where that came from, maybe Wi-Fi. Um, if I hit the Configure button, you can see I've got two systems. I've got MSI, my laptop, and then to the left, to the left, I've got the X5000. It's as simple as that. If I wanted to add a new computer, you just click this button, give it a name, uh, hit enter, and then it pops up, and you can literally drag it around. Like, where are your monitors? Where, are, where is it? Um, unfortunately, it's only like five across. So if you have six monitors across, you got to be like in down. But whatever. Um, so 
It also has some nice debug logging here. I'm going to just full screen it. I don't think I've ever done that. Um, it's probably kind of hard to read online, but it's not material. Um, right now, they're not connected. So I'm, you can see the mouse here moving it. I cannot get off of this screen. For me personally, mentally, that's like really weird because at home I've been doing this for like five years. <laughs> so it always does that. I'm going to switch over to the X5000. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to, there it goes. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the Synergy client. So I'm going to CD to UHC tools. Uh, oh, sorry, UHC. Uh, as I said, there's a lot of stuff here. I'll unpack that a little bit. Um, I'm going to go to their C directory. A lot of stuff here, a lot of really cool stuff, especially for scripting and things like that. And you'll notice in here there's a Synergy client. Take some simple arguments. Who am I talking to? Who am I? And the name matters. So if you advertise yourself as X5000 on the client, the server needs to expect that. Newer versions change, but for us, that's where it is. Timeout, some features, output data, whatever. So we're just going to type in the IP address of my uh, Windows machine. Anybody recognize 137 subnet? Where that's coming from? No? OK. Um, I'm going to say my name is X5000, and I'm expecting to talk to a Windows server. So my protocol is 1.8, got connected. So now if I take my finger and go to the PC, I can move the mouse from the PC. Now UHC Tools is cross-platform. And they've got builds, I think, for everything. Aeros, Amigo OS, Amigo OS 4, and Morpho OS. And so you can run this on your classics. I'll tell you that a 1200 without a Pi Storm it's a little dicey because this is not designed for the old universe where data flow is slow. This is designed for the modern universe where it's like constantly sending data. With a Pi Storm, it is ripping fast. So if you do not buy your Pi Storm, you, lo you missed out. Um, but the cool thing about this is I can actually grab text on our PC, Control C. I can come to my Amiga, right click, new shell. And I can hit Control V. Uh, I can't hit Control V here. And I can um, paste the text back and forth. So I can go to the Amiga, and I can <laughs> jump. Um, I can grab stuff from the Amiga text, and I can paste it on the PC. I can grab it from my Amiga, take it to my Mac, and you can cut and paste back and forth. There's a bug, like every toy said they got to restart it because it's a data size or something, and I'm just too lazy to figure out what's going on. But for basic text, a URL, I get a URL on the PC. I want to put it on my Amiga. Boom, done. Super, super simple. It really brings these two things together. So you have one keyboard and mouse on the PC, in my case, and I can drag it over to my Amiga, and I don't have to shift everything. I've got two monitors going. It's the way I like to do things. I, I'm not a uh, monitor switcher. Like, this environment to that environment. I like to see everything and like make it all active. So uh, that's another option. Um, so this is the, the Synergy technology where you can share keyboard or mouse from one computer and you can connect your Amiga to that. Linux will work, Windows will work. I, I'm, I can't even begin to describe the number of places you can run Synergy. Like it's a very ported protocol. I would love it if somebody made a USB version. I know that's really strange. But I would love a USB keyboard and mouse that acted like a Synergy target so that I could control anything high speed that I could plug that into. And that's weird, but it's also like really cool. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll pause there on Synergy. Any questions about that? OK. Uh, let me check Discord. See. Yeah, please. He added some stuff in there, and, and he, he has worked on a little bit. It was really slow with the slower processor. So it will work. Um, uh, let me, uh, let me uh, say that there's another tool that was written by Andy Broad called MKShare, which allows you to share Amiga to Amiga. So if you've got an OS4 and you've got a Classic or two Classics, He's done it in an Amiga way, to be short, you know, a quick way of saying it, so that the data transfer doesn't overwhelm the machine. 
where Synergy was designed for, you know, 100 megabit networks and these sorts of things in the beginning. Um, one question, does Synergy exist for OS4, use the same keyboard and mouse on several computers? That would be the server version, and it does not. We don't have that for OS4. We don't have a server. We'd love a server. Ryan, maybe you can port us a server. Um, the Morpho S1 is actually really good. It's a control panel. It looks exactly like I showed you on the PC. They did a great job on that. But we do not have access to that. Um, okay. I've got a bunch of other questions. You can do more advanced layout and synergy by hand editing the config file. Thank you, Jamie. So I'll have to look into that for my own needs because I need to go horizontally like eight screens. Um, so thanks for the hat tip there, Jamie. And I'll say that I am not the expert on any of this stuff. These are just things that I have done and, and through my own knowledge and experimentation. And I thought it'd be nice to share, especially with a table coming. Maybe we'll have some new OS4 users. Maybe they'll find this video and find something useful. OK, moving on. Uh, 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 we'll save that for later. I'm not going to do that. OK, Samba FS2. How many people know what Samba is? File shared protocol. It's not Samba. That's the Unix thing. It's actually SMB, uh, which is a short message block or something like that, shared message block, uh, which is actually also called SIFS, which is common internet file system, which I always hated that name, like whatever. Um, SMB1 was pretty hor horrific as a protocol. Uh, SMB2 got a lot faster. And SMB3 is, is even much more advanced. Um, for a long time, we had SMB1 only. Uh, we actually have a Samba port that's ancient, so you can run a Samba server local. Um, I don't know where the OS4 one is relative to OS3, but it's, uh, it's there. Uh, I don't do that, but you can. Um, recently, a year ago, uh, Frederick Wilkinson, is that how I say it? Do you know what I'm talking about, Trevor? Yeah, why don't I just bring up, you guys can help me. I'm, I'm obviously terrible at pronouncing names. Yeah. So I'm going to go to OS4 Depot. Jeez, I don't know what's going to come up here. SMB2FS. There it was, right there. That's going to down. No. Uh, Frederick Wilkstrom. Wilkstrom. Thank you, Frederick, for everything you've done. I love your tools. They all work. Your code is fantastic. Uh, I, when you publish bug updates, you read the bug update, and you're like, wow, that's incredibly esoteric. <laughs> like, he's very good at publishing good code. Um, how many downloads does this thing have? Uh, 578. That's pretty good for an OS4 tool. Um, very, very easy. Uh, I already have it local, so we can go ahead and unpack it. So it's a very small tool. It has its own installation script. Very easy to do. It's an L handler, so it's a file system handler on the Amiga. Uh, it has since been ported to OS3. So there's an OS3 version of this. And performance aside, the reason why uh, SMBFS2 is so important is compatibility. When you buy a Linux, uh, Windows machine, SMB1 is off. And it's getting more off. Like, it's harder to turn on because it's massively insecure. Um, SMB2 is available everywhere, and it's not massively insecure. Um, so you run the installer script. It copies the files. You can read the license and the README. It's very simple to use. It's just an Amiga DOS driver. You just put the parameters in there. Uh, it's got a bunch of options. Um, it's, it's, it's very simple. It's actually harder, I would say, to make your PC the right network type so that it can be seen, all the pieces on and off to make it, make it work. Um, what this looks like... Uh, and I'll run the uh, multi-viewer from the enhancer package for those of you who are looking for software to purchase. Um, DOS drivers, PCD. So this is what it looks like. Very, very simple. I just typed in this startup's information in terms of what's the protocol. Obvious, but we have to put it in there. It's the URI. My name. You can also embed the password, which I didn't want to do because we're broadcasting it. It's, it's AmiWest. Um, and then the IP address of our target and the share. On the, and, the, and we'll connect, and then I'll go show the window side. It's dirt simple. Um, all I need to do is to just change directories. Ah, missed a litter. Now it's asking for the password.
Uh oh, I got to get it right. So this is the user and password for the computer. And if I got it right, I must have typed it incorrectly. My bad. Ugh, come on, Bill. Oh, there it is. Okay, I got it right. So now I have access to this laptop's D drive, which is a, an NVMe disk. Um, all the tools work. We can edit files, although there's something really editable in here. Uh, I could copy files. We could do uh, copy NDI tools.exe, which is pretty big, to my NVMe device. And we can look at the performance up here at the top. For some reason, someone turned off off Windows scrolling. So this is running about 13, 14 megabytes per second, which is actually pretty slow. I've seen it peak out at like 50. Like it'll move at like 50 megabytes per second on the right conditions. So it still is running about 15, 20 megabytes per second, which if you spend a lot of time with OS 4 is a good transfer rate. Um, I can copy stuff from NVMe. Uh, Pre Trevor's presentation. Uh, or not. Okay. <laughs> Maybe the uh, NVMe device died. Uh, I don't want to go spelunking in other directories. That's not going to go well. Um, whoops. Something broke on the NVMe. But anyway, you guys get the idea. It allows you to connect your two machines. You can go to an application. You can do open. Uh, we can do multi-edit and maybe go find a, a file here. Temp file. I don't trust that. Program. This is a. It's like a Steam library. There's there's not going to be a lot of stuff. Oh, there we go. Some text. So it's just a regular Amiga OS drive. It just happens to be on on SMB. So again, Amiga support. OS 3, OS 4, easy to connect to your PC. On the PC, just for completeness, um, all you do is open up your favorite, um, oh, I'm like, where's the mouse? It was over on the other machine. Um, open up your favorite uh, tool for, for file viewing. I use directory opus. Scroll to your drive or folder in a folder level, right click, press the properties button, and then choose sharing. And just share it. And once it's shared and the network is set up and everything, you can access that from your Amiga with the username and password. You can turn your usernames and passwords off, of course, uh, but that's the easiest way of doing it. Uh, Linux has SMB support. Everybody's got SMB support. Your NAS system you buy from, from Micro Center has SMB support. Super nice for moving files back and forth transparently with the Amiga. Okay? Um, the same thing with FTP. I'm not really going to get into it. There's other videos, but you have Zeta FTP. So now you're running the FTP server on your Amiga. You can connect into that, expose the directories, move files back and forth. I used to do it that way, where from my PC I would pull files over or push them into the Amiga. Uh, but with SMB FS2, I can go to my Amiga and very quickly reach over to the PC and pull files over and, and vice versa. So now I have both directions with the FTP on the Amiga and SMBFS. Okay, any questions? No questions, good. I'll give the uh, internet here a question. Um, now we're gonna get for the really fun one. This is a lot of fun. Let me minimize this. Um, how many people here use Linux? A lot. We've got a lot of Linux users. I'm looking at maybe 200 people in the room here. <laughs> Sorry. That's the alternate reality in my brain. Um, so, actually, you know what? Connect. You can see audience cam. So that's what I'm seeing from the, the people online. This is what the audience looks like. It's Sunday afternoon at Amy West. I'm not too uh, prideful here. Um, I'm going to launch the Linux subsystem for Windows. Does anyone guess what I'm going to do? No. X Windows. If you're a Unix person, you know X Windows. There's a program on the Amiga. Oh, I guess I could have used uh, uh, Frederick's SSH term to reach over in a Linux machine to spawn it, but we'll go back and forth. 
There's a program on the Amiga. It's a fantastic package called Emmy Signix. And if you have an OS4 machine, I highly recommend it. It is not the fastest thing on the planet. Um, if we go multi-core, I believe it's going to help a lot. Um, there's a lot of ported software that, uh, what's his name, Paul? Eric Schwinn? Edgar Schwann. Edgar Schwann. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, Edgar. Edgar Schwann is created. Um, great guy. I've worked with him trying to debug a few things. We don't have Discord in the pigeon port because something we don't understand wasn't working properly. But there's a, a GIMP port here, um, AB Word, if you're going to do Word documents. I'll, I'll go ahead and launch it so you can get like a view. Um, one of the things that he's done, and, and if you're familiar with X Windows, it is a desktop environment. Um, why, why don't we start there? I'll, I'll back up a little bit. If I hit Start uh, Emmy Signets, it's opening a new screen. And it's, it's launching into a desktop. Uh, the Amiga Workbench is a desktop. Windows, for all intents and purposes, is the desktop. This is a desktop uh, where I have icons and, and applications and utilities and control and all that kind of stuff. I'm watching it bang the hard drive over here as it's loading. Uh, as I said, it's not super fast, and I never actually run it this way. But you can. Yeah, it's just an Amiga screen. Unfortunately, with Synergy, I can't like throw it over there, like Tony Stark style, maybe someday. Um, so here I can run any of these applications. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that's like super lightweight that's going to start quickly. I'm watching my Joe Torre mo Mojo meter in my X5000 showing me the hard drive activity. Thank you, Joe. So simple game, no problem. It, this is, for all intents and purposes, a Unix user interface. That's what we're looking at. Um, very heavy. Um, it, it's, it's just a lot. What he has done, like, it's slow. Um, what he's done is he said, okay, well, what if I don't want to run the entire thing? What if I just want to run ABI Word? And that's where this uh, start application standalone so if I double check it, it'd be like, okay, how do you want it to look? What engine do you want me to use? So all sorts of stuff you can read about. And it's going to launch on the workbench and be much more application-like and less like I am booting another computer inside your computer. And so it's still X Windows. It's still a little bit slow. Um, but eventually it, it'll uh, fire up here. I don't know why my uh, disks are slow. I've got to check my file system. This is a little slower than it should be. Could also be one of my beta updates. Could be, could be. I did, but it's this is more holistic. I could switch it all to NVMe. It might be faster. I gotta try that. Um, so this is like ABI Word. It's a great program. This is an ancient version, but it's still it's just text. Like I don't need AI yet in there. Um, one of the things that you can do with the uh, with X Windows from the very beginning is promote your application. So the application is running on A, but the display is on B. And that was the old server, client server architecture of the, of the ancient universe where you had a big giant computer and a thousand users and you're running X windows and then you need an application. What this, what it's doing, ME Signix, is launching an X windows client and then a server and they talk to each other. That's how it works. So, um, there is a tool here under prefs. This is like the magic piece of information if you want to make this work. So this is what you've got to pay attention to at home. If you click the server access, and it was broken and he posted an update. I, don't, I think it's in the packaging. You can type in the permitted hosts who are allowed to talk. Because in the beginning, X Windows has always had IP-based security. It's, I'm sure it's better now, but IP-based security. This display number is also very important because X Windows is, is a Unix program. It doesn't, it's super unopinionated about what the numbers are, but they matter when you're doing something in that local session. So here you can see display w window one, and here's the IP address of my laptop. So what I'm going to do is I am going to fire up the start server only, and I'm going to hit use. And 
the, the, the width of the driver, video driver, go read his docs on all that stuff. I don't want to get into it here. So now I just have a window and there's nothing in it. So what I'm going to do is pop over to my PC laptop running the Linux subsystem. And you can do this from a Raspberry Pi. Do it from whatever you want. And I'm going to say export display. And this is all X Windows goo you can look up. 192, 168, 137, 106, colon 1. So I told this local shell session that when an X Windows application starts, tell it your display is over there, and over there is my Amiga. And if we want to have some fun with this, I can pop into VNC. And I can launch my Windows subsystem thing here. And I can say, and there's an ancient program called Xize. And if it works, where is it? It should be there. Yep, it's display one. There it is. Oh, it's in the middle. It was buried by the window. <laughs> when I first did it, it popped up over here. So now you can see I've got Xize. And uh, on the PC, it's absolutely there. So let me go back. So I was going to have some fun with this. I hadn't tried this particular demo, which is why it took me by surprise. So now we've got the eyes. So notice the eyes are not moving because the mouse is on my laptop. If I move the mouse to the X5000, the eyes start moving because they see the mouse, which is synergied onto the other screen. OK. So that's interesting, right? We're looking at X eyes. What about something more interesting, like, I don't know, Firefox, per chance? So here's some errors. I'm running Firefox on this PC. I'm looking at it through my Amiga. So if I wanted to go to like Wikipedia, is it fast? Eh. It's not blind, blindingly fast. I'll click here. But it is the Firefox rendering engine, so it looks correct. And it's not entirely unusable, <laughs> speed-wise. It's not terrible. So if you're looking for a better browsing experience on your OS 4 system, this is a way of doing it where you can take a better browser and make it show up on your Amiga. Um, so this is a, a very cool tool. There's a lot of Linux applications that are interesting and fun. Uh, we talked about GIMP earlier, which is the GNU image processor. Um, you can use that. There, there is one major stumbling block today. There is a command in X Windows called RAND R that Edgar has not implemented yet. It's in the 1.7 protocol. He's at 1.6, which means we're close. But a lot of things that I've tried, like the Discord client and things like that, say I need RAND R. And computer science reasons don't need into that, but they don't run. They just can't work because our, uh, I guess actually I got it wrong. Like this is the server and the other side's the client. But anyway, our server uh, does not have the ability to run that command. So the, the application just doesn't function. So it's a little bit of trial and error, but it's another way of getting applications on your Amiga system. And of course, you can full screen this, so it can be off on its own window, all that kind of fun junk um, with this. Oh, you know what I have not done? Yeah, yes, Trevor. Yeah. Yeah, this is an Amiga application. So you can, the question is, can you copy and paste from the, uh, from the X window side and local. Yes, if you go to save a file, the file system says, you know, here are your Amiga disks. So you're working in GIMP and the processing is here, but you hit the save button and it shows you the file systems over there. So there you go, there's the MUS web page running a Firefox on an Amiga. <laughs> in a quasi sort of roundabout way. Okay. Um, 
what else do I want to do? So that that's kind of high level. What I wanted to show is just some ways that you can connect the uh, systems together. Of course, um, if you have an Amiga and you want to see like debug output and whatnot, Moby X term on a PC will let you open that up, save the session, makes it very easy to get access to data. That's awesome. Um, I you can do like the M MMC, which is uh, a cable you can buy for your uh, A1222 or X5000. You can get access to the baseboard controls. So you can like turn it on, turn it off, see voltages, all that kind of stuff. Um, and connect that over to the PC as well. Um, which one? So the question from Trevor is remote desktop. We do not have a remote desktop server. We have a remote desktop client. So you could absolutely use um, uh, Darren's remote desktop, uh, our desktop, our desktop to view the PC. So if you want to bring the PC screen to the Amiga, you can do that. Um, there is also uh, twin VNC. I prefer uh, VNC for my uh, uh, cross communication of screens because the um, the, the VNC protocol allows you to project the screen on the PC to the uh, ah I got to remember the password. Actually, that was local. No, three. Um, anyway, I set up VNC over here. I just forget the password. Um, if you use the R desktop client, it's actually the RDP protocol. And it's got some better features. But on the Windows machine, it doesn't really take your desktop and show it to you. It logs in as a remote user. And so if you're doing something, it may or may not survive that. And if you're doing anything like playing EverQuest and you want to like move your guy around, it doesn't work very well because the, RD, the RDP session uses a virtual GPU. So it works. But if you disconnect, the game blows up. Whereas if you run VNC, you can log in from anywhere on the planet, move your guy around, and let the mobs come because you're trying to get your Slayer quest, and then log out, and then come back, and it's there again because the virtual GPU. So I read that somewhere. Um, yeah, any other questions? Thank you, Trevor. Let me check online. Yep. Yeah, you can also use VNC to connect to another machine and run the browser there as well. I like the X11 version because it's a little closer. <laughs> like we're inching closer to getting our browser fixed. Yeah, Tony. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's, the question is, what does a VNC server have with regards to acceleration? I mean, I don't know what low-level libraries and stuff are missing to do that? I don't think so. I mean, we do have the VA libraries, which do allow for access to the encoders and whatnot. Um, if he's using the graphics library of the Amiga, then in theory, if somebody were to accelerate the Amiga graphics library, it should help there. I don't know. I mean, VNC, sorry, X Windows is very TCP intensive, and our TCP stack is not super fast. It's very functional, and, and it's dated, but complete. Um, so I think that's actually more of the bottleneck, is more in, in the overhead of packets, because that's not natural for the platform. Where in Unix, it's a lot more natural. So um, I could be wrong. If someone has a better technical explanation, please. But that's my kind of uh, understanding of how it, how it works together. Uh, what else do I got? I did want to show one other thing. Um, briefly, but somebody's, oh, I have, uh, let me shut down the VNC server because it's using a lot of CPU. You can see that bar at the top because it's constantly doing a lot of memory work to figure out if anything has changed on the screen. Uh, I was talking to Roger about YouTube, and everyone loves YouTube. Um, there is a tool that we have on uh, OS4 Depot called AIO Streams. Um, one of two, I'll get you, Paul. And if you do the AIO streams, uh, ah, forgot the extension. So you can look up the parameters, but this is search for videos that contain the word Amiga in them. 
Um, and the way this works is actually something I didn't realize until recently, but it reaches out to Georgia's server, collects the results, and spits them back at you. Um, but you can play these URLs. Let me try to find something that looks safe. Because who knows what you're going to get. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need no babies. Ah, you know, it just dumped my Synergy text into there. <laughs> yeah, we could stream the stream, but that would be bad. Sorry. I get confused as to where my uh, paste buffer is going to come from. Glorious games ever made. Oh, here's one on a lot. No, see, that, that's not, if it's got like 47 million hits, that is not an Amiga video. You should probably not play that for the first time in a crowd of people. Um, let's see if I can get this one going. Edit, copy. Oh my gosh. The mouse is on this like table thing. It's hard. Paste. So this should fire off a motion. Oh, I think I need URL, right? Yeah, dash U. Sorry, George. You got to work on your usability. And the audio is live, so it should fire off. Eh, it might be a little laggy, too. The network here is interesting. I'll give this a second. There's another tool called YT Rex, which Paul actually does a lot of work on as well. Um, and YT Rex, I don't think it has a search feature, does it? Oh, the one like eight months ago that I haven't tried yet? Yeah. Okay. So YT Rex is a little bit different. Let me copy. So what, what Paul is telling me is YT Rex is uh, a little further ahead in its development uh, and compatibility. Yep. I mean, there's no reason why none of this stuff can't get like a little Hollywood user interface stuck on top of it, so it becomes a GUI, but just work that hasn't happened. So here what it's doing, as I said, YT Rex, it's all set up. Um, there's a little bit of work there, but it's worth it. Um, it gets the name, and it's saying, what do you want to do with this sucker? We can watch it. Um, I'll go, or download it. So I'm going to press 1 just for brevity's sake, and we'll say uh, play it. And so this is a motion player going to YouTube to play the video. The, the network here is through the, the 5G. It's, it's super laggy, but uh, plus that machine's doing the live stream and all of it. But it, it does work. It does work. It's just a network problem here locally. So the other thing you can do with YT Rex is you can set it up as pop-up menu in your browser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you see a link to YouTube, you can just right-click on it and say play. So what Paul's saying is you can uh, integrate YT Rex into your browser experience. Um, <laughs> That was funny. Did you see what was on the Commodore 60, the, the CD32, the logo? Yeah, 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 I just spotted it. Because I've been spending a lot of time with the CD32, and I just noticed it. I've never seen this video before. But look at the top left corner of the actual console. <laughs> SHIT is what he wrote on it. He removed the, the Amiga, and he put it there. Anyway, uh, with YT Rex, you can integrate it in like iBrowse and other browsers. So if you go to a page that has a, a YouTube link, you can just right click and say, give me that link and click through the menus to, to play the video outside of the browser experience. You could just play it straight. Yeah. No oh. No, no, uh, Companies emerged like Nintendo and Sega to pick up the pieces and good. resurrect the. And it works in high res. If I was home, I'd totally play the high res version because I got fat bandwidth at home. Okay. Um, any other questions? I don't know who this person is, but thank you for supporting the Amiga. Any other questions? Anything you guys want to see on OS4? Any questions about OS4 I can answer while I'm here? Broadcasting? Anything? Oh my gosh. It's a, well, I mean, most people here are massively hungover. So <laughs> Intuition based net is it com or net did i spell that right oh god are we going to see girls no um uh if you're not aware of it uh as i talked about on saturday morning intuition uh base.com has been restored um it's been cleaned up ld deserves a hug for the amount of work that he's done on this hey ld i mean ld the, i mean if you buy an a1222 you should make a shrine to ld because like 
I mean, what LD has done for that platform as a beta tester is insane. How many games did you run? 250? Yeah, a lot. Like, ran the game, played it, wrote down what happened, put it in a database, I'm guessing, from the way your output comes out. I mean, like, hardcore, does this work or not? It's really it was inspirational uh, from beta testing perspective. But this is a great site for questions about compatible hardware. Um, and if you, so if you're standing at the uh, Pacheco Electronics Recycling and you're looking at the stack of video cards or the sound cards, and you're going to be like, oh, there's a $5 PCIe sound card. Does it work? You can open up your phone and navigate to this, this website and be like, where's my sound cards? Uh, graphics, RAM, scanners, where is it? Uh, uh, there. Um, and it has a list of sound cards with, like, the chipset. So you can bust out your phone and be like, what's that chipset? Um, I use it all the time. So there, it's pretty much up to date now. I don't know if it has um, Herald's drivers listed here. Maybe. I don't think, because they're not technically available, they're not here. Um, but we'll make sure they get in there when they, uh, if he ever decides to release those again or if they show up somewhere else. Um, so it's, it's a great site for, will this work with my OS4 system? Again, thinking about Tabor users, people coming online who are new to OS4, it's a wonderful resource to find compatible software. Here's a commercial software listing. Um, the team has literally gone through here and verified that you can go buy this stuff still somehow, some way, um, and it's been cleaned up. It's a shorter list. It's definitely a shorter list than it was two months ago because a lot of stuff is, is not available anymore. Um, so if you own Amiga OS 4, you should check out this website and, and learn about different software, hardware. There's compatible software, uh, much bigger list, uh, native and classic. Um, anyway, it's fantastic. The other major resource is OS4 Depot, if you have an OS4 machine. Um, a lot of software pops up on AmiNet, still stuff there. You can run a lot of Amiga stuff. Uh, but OS4 Depot is 100% OS4 focused. Um, most things will show up here pretty quickly. Uh, here's the touch driver that we're running at the, the demonstration here. Um, Alfredo did an amazing job. He's been working really hard on it over the last couple of years. The multi-touch, can't wait for that uh, SDK to come out, hint, hint. Um, this is a great location for various software. If you've not seen MediaVault, this is an amazing tool by our buddy George. Um, you can go and like uh, play uh, audio streams, works super well. Um, you can search podcasts. Uh, I keep asking to put YouTube in here, but he doesn't want to do it. It'd be a perfect interface for YouTube. <laughs> we don't really have a touchscreen friendly user interface. That thing is small. Um, iGame is another thing that George picked up. Uh, this is a pretty cool tool. So you can uh, find games and launch them. Um, I was talking to... Uh, I was talking to um, Dan earlier about the adventure games. What I did was I loaded the whole list here. I probably shouldn't show this because I don't want to go to jail, but I showed the whole list. And I went to like the earliest games because they have all the years. And that was kind of cool. Like, okay, what was life like for the kids in 1986 with their games? And started like looking to see what was here, like super, super old games, Bard's Tale is in here. Um, anyway, we'll put that away. So that's a great utility. iGame, eGame I've shown in the past, Emotion Deep Player. Okay. Any other questions or? Okay. Well, that is the end of my OS4 presentation. And thanks everyone for coming. Uh, we have about an hour left of the show. People are going to start cleaning up and packing up. I'm going to do the same thing. Um, and, and start to pack up and we'll officially wrap at five o'clock. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> so Jamie uh, knows the video. That we're, Jamie Kruger, who's been here a couple times, knows that video. And so the angry nerd guy hates the CD32 and actually throws it in the trash at the end of the video. Oh. <laughs>
I'm glad we didn't watch that all the way through because we don't need any of that here.